Welcome to Bryce Canyon National Park, one of the premier national parks in southern Utah. There's five of them, and this one just has this beautiful, iconic landscape, these pinkish rocks, these needles, spires, and hoodoos that stick out of the earth in this just captivating landscape. We're here in the winter time, which is a really special time to enjoy the park because it's less crowded, you get the contrast of the snow, uh, and just a fantastic time to check things out. We're out here with a couple of friends. There's my buddy Darren, say hi. There we go. So thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Uh, today what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about how this landscape came to be. We'll talk a little bit about the rocks, how these rocks were deposited, how this plateau has been sculpted by weathering and erosion to produce these fantastic landforms you see behind me here. So let's start with the rocks themselves. Um, the rocks here tend to be pink, to whitish in color. They're a little hard to identify, and I think if you didn't know any better, having traveled around southern Utah, you would assume that these are sandstones. But these are actually limestones, kind of a, a muddy limestone. And limestones typically form in marine settings in the ocean, but these limestones are a little bit different. They're freshwater limestones. They formed in a lake. So a lake environment is the depositional environment that formed this unit here. This is a unit called the Claron Formation, and it's from an interesting period in Earth's history called the Eocene, about 50 million years ago. Let me show you a little diagram that'll set the stage a little bit for what was going on in the Eocene. So here is a paleogeographic map, one of the great maps that uh, Ron Blakey at NAU puts together, one of my former professors, and I've outlined Utah here. You can see the state of Utah and this is what the Eocene looked like in the western US About 50 million years ago the landscape we would have seen and you can see there's a couple big lakes in this part of the west and this southern one here This is where we're at here. This is Lake Claron So this was the depositional environment that existed when these rocks were deposited It was an interesting time because we were just coming off of two big mountain building events in the Cretaceous and kind of coming into the beginning of the Eocene, the Severe and Laramide orogenies had pushed up a bunch of mountains uh, throughout the Intermountain West. And as the Eocene dawned, things were kind of transitioning. We hadn't yet arrived at the period of basin and range extension and the landscape we know today. But in some of these basins, these low areas, uh, the Eocene was a very wet period. The climate was much more temperate than it is today. The deserts we see in Southern Utah weren't present. It was a totally different climate regime. And so we had these freshwater lakes that existed at that time. And that's the, um, the environment that formed these rocks here. So you can see the rocks are pretty, pretty uniform throughout, but when you look at some of the hoodoos, you can make out some of the bedding. So there's some, you know, a little bit more resistant layers with the limestone in there, some softer layers that are maybe dominated with the, by the muds. Uh, if you work your way further down to the bottom part of this formation, there are some conglomerates and sandstones. But for the most part, it's limestones, it's mudstones that dominate this unit. So the first part of our story is the deposition of the Claron Formation, these beautiful pink pastel rocks that form the landscape here at Bryce Canyon. The second part of the story takes place a little bit later during the Miocene, maybe about 10 to 12 million years ago, when the entire Colorado Plateau region uh, was uplifted. And so the uplift of this area brought it up to these, these lofty heights here. This part of the Colorado Plateau is called the Ponzagat Plateau, and it sits at about 8,000 feet. So Bryce Canyon um, it receives quite a bit of snow in the wintertime, as you can see. It also receives a lot of thunderstorm activity in the late summer and the monsoon season. But this elevation where Bryce Canyon sits is almost like the perfect elevation for freeze-thaw cycles. And so we get these fractures in the rocks. You, you, we have fractures that have formed, these more or less vertical fractures in the Claron Formation. Um, and those fractures get expanded and widened due to frost wedging. So as snow and rain gets into those fractures, at night it can freeze. When water freezes, it expands by about 9%, and then it can thaw and then freeze again the next night. And the Bryce Canyon area has a really interesting climate where they get about 170 days on average each year where the temperature 
rises above freezing during the day and then sinks below freezing. So with that many days in the cycle of the, the calendar year, you can really have frost wedging become a really uh, pronounced erosional agent here. Um, and so this is actually the headwaters of the plateau here, the, the headland here in the plateau. This is what's feeding into the Perea River drainage, which goes down into the Colorado River at the start of the Grand Canyon. So over time, we can imagine this landscape through continued frost wedging and um, rainfall that this canyon landscape will start to erode further back into the plateau here and these drainages will get longer. So just a really fantastic landscape here at Bryce Canyon National Park. Um, winter time is a great time to come and enjoy it. There are cross-country ski trails, snowshoe trails, and places where you can access the landscape. Uh, some of the trails are a little trickier to get into, but if you're adventurous and willing to take the time to do it, it's just a really magical landscape. So highly recommended. So thanks again for joining me. Appreciate uh, all you do to support the channel, subscribing, liking, sharing, all those good things. There's also a thanks button at the bottom of the viewer. And then there's some donate buttons under the video descriptions if you'd like to make a donation to help me make these geology education videos. So we'll see you next time. Signing off from Bryce Canyon National Park.